we contacted Dr. Eli Jady, who holds a PhD in signal processing and a bachelor's degree in electronic engineering. In this video, he explains various concepts related to Lloyd Stovall's video on Maxwell, as well as the technology developed by Maxwell Chikumbuzo and whether it is effective. Listen to him and share your thoughts. If you want to discuss this further, my email is provided in the description. Now, let's discuss Maxwell's invention. If you switch a MOSFET on and off, it is completely true that you will generate spikes. Before getting into details, let me introduce myself. I am an electronic engineer with extensive experience in medical devices, mainly in X-ray imaging, gamma imaging, fluorescence-based devices, as well as wearable and implantable medical devices. I hold 25 patents in these fields. Now that I am retired and have gained considerable knowledge both theoretically and experimentally, I have decided to share what I know with younger individuals. I teach solar energy to students in Madagascar and cover sensor technology, conductivity, and electrochemistry in Vietnam and Peru. Let me first introduce some definitions. This is my personal definition, but you can adjust it as needed. A magnetic field created by a stationary magnet is a static property that extends outward from the magnet's location. To extract energy from this field, movement is required, such as moving a coil. The variation in magnetic flux within the coil generates electrical energy, but this is merely a conversion of mechanical motion into electrical energy, with some losses in the wires. Electromagnetic waves can be understood as two vectors an electric field and a magnetic field that propagate through air or another medium. An antenna is a means of generating such electromagnetic waves, such as for radio transmission. However, whenever voltage is switched at a high speed, electromagnetic waves are induced, which can interfere with nearby systems. Many researchers are working to minimize these effects. It's also important to note that the power density of an RF signal diminishes according to the inverse square of the distance from the antenna. This means that if you have one kilowatt of effective radiated RF power at one kilometer from the antenna, the energy received per square meter will be in the range of milliwatts to microwatts. It is certainly possible to capture this small amount of power, and many YouTube videos demonstrate this process. However, using this method to power an electric vehicle is not practical. It is only suitable for low power applications, such as sensors. A transformer, on the other hand, alters the characteristics of an input source to obtain a different output. However, it does not create energy and incurs losses due to heat dissipation in the wires and magnetic circuits. This is why high power transformers tend to get warm. While it is possible to step up voltage significantly using something like a Tesla coil or adjust current as seen in welding machines, the output power will always be less than the input power. Only superconductors, which have zero resistance, can function without energy losses. A DC voltage source is intended to maintain a constant voltage regardless of the load applied to it. However, a truly perfect constant voltage source does not exist, as there is always an internal resistance, often not physically accessible, like in a battery. You can estimate a battery's internal resistance using a suitable meter. For instance, I measured approximately one ohm on a brand new AA battery. This means the maximum current output is always limited by this internal resistance. Short circuiting a battery can be extremely dangerous, as all the stored chemical energy is rapidly converted into heat. Another example of a DC source is a solar panel. Near the open circuit voltage, a solar panel behaves approximately like a current source. You can find IV characteristic curves for solar panels online or on YouTube. It's worth mentioning that the efficiency of a solar panel is around 20%. This means that even though the sun provides about one kilowatt per square meter of energy, only 200 watts of electrical power can be extracted. The light spectrum emitted by LEDs is not ideal for solar cells because photovoltaic components are optimized for sunlight, which contains a lot of infrared energy. A MOSFET can function either as a variable resistor or as a switch, depending on how its gate pin is controlled. Increasing the gate voltage, for instance, in an N-channel MOSFET reduces the resistance between the source and drain to a few milliohomes. If you check the datasheets of typical MOSFET transistors, you will see that they can switch at high speeds. 
When a MOSFET is switched on and off, spikes are inevitably generated. To explain this further, consider a scenario where a coil or capacitor is connected to a MOSFET. A small amount of energy from the power source is stored in either the electrostatic field of the capacitor or the magnetic field of the coil. When the MOSFET is turned off, this stored energy does not instantly disappear, but instead gets released as high voltage spikes, which can potentially damage components. However, this is merely a conversion of previously stored energy. It does not create energy from nothing. Many electronic engineers work on mitigating these effects to improve system reliability. Typically, the stored energy is dissipated as heat, representing a loss in efficiency. For example, DC to DC converters must handle this issue. And although a well-designed converter can achieve up to 95% efficiency, the output power will always be less than the input power. The high-speed switching of MOSFETs inevitably leads to some losses, which is why heat stinks are often used to keep them cool. Regarding electromotive force in electric motors, I prefer the term counter-electromotive force. When voltage is applied to a motor, its rotor begins to move, generating an EMF that typically opposes this motion. This is one reason why motors have a natural speed limit. You can calculate the EMF using a model of the motor. An equilibrium is eventually reached between the power supplied to the motor and the opposing EMF. Essentially, a motor converts electrical energy into mechanical energy, though with some losses. A well-designed motor can achieve an efficiency of around 92% to 95%, with the remaining energy lost as heat. Now, regarding Maxwell's invention, the RF energy from a radio station is not a reliable source of power. According to claims made by their technology, the energy is supposedly sourced from celestial bodies such as the moon, the sun, and the earth. However, the moon emits very little RF energy aside from the light it reflects from the sun. The earth does generate RF energy, but quantifying and extracting it efficiently is a challenge. Meanwhile, the sun primarily emits visible and infrared light with occasional bursts of RF energy during high solar activity, which can sometimes disrupt telecommunications. A key concern is that when using MOSFETs or similar systems for power conversion, the output power is always lower than the input power. If kilowatts of energy were readily available in the environment and could be captured efficiently, we would expect to see regulatory issues similar to those governing RF emissions from mobile phones and communication towers. The human body absorbs RF energy, and excessive exposure could cause heating or even biological damage, depending on the frequency and intensity of the waves. Another odd detail is that the claimed power output of the Maxwell EV system is only 8 watts, far lower than the kilowatts required for typical electric vehicles. Testing the Maxwell generator wouldn't require a complex setup. A simple experiment using two multimeters and high-power resistors would suffice. One multimeter would measure the voltage across the generator, while the other would measure the current flowing through different resistors. This is a common method I use with my students in Madagascar to analyze the IV characteristics of various energy sources, including solar panels. In conclusion, I have shared some relevant insights regarding this invention. Ultimately, it is up to you to evaluate whether the technology is plausible. Thank you for your attention.